Hello, and welcome to the VS Code Tips and Tricks Robocon presentation. I'm Fabio Zadrazny, and I'm working with Robocarp, who also sponsors the development of the Robot Framework Language Server, which is the main extension I'm going to showcase today. A couple of years ago at Robocon 2021, I did a presentation which showed the basic features of Robot at the time, such as code completion, fine definition, code analysis, and so forth. So this time around, the idea will be showing some of the more advanced features, which weren't available at the time, and maybe give additional insights on how to customize the basic features and how to use them on your day by day. The first thing I want to show is that I have Robocarp code as well as the Robot Frame Plugin Server installed, and. The first thing we're going to do is create our robot. So we're going to use the Robocarp code, new robot template. We're going to use the playwright and we're going to put it in our workspace. So the playwright template has by default RK framework as well as the robot framework browser. And it gives us an initial tasks here. So let's erase all that to start from the beginning. So we're on a blank state here. And the first thing I want to do is actually create an interactive console. You can start it from the, the interactive console from the common palette. And then it should create a new tab for you which is the interactive console. So you can use it to type anything you want. Okay, and we're going to start creating a task and we're going to automate accessing this URL. It's mostly the beginner's guide on, on the Robocar.com beginner tutorials. So let's start by doing that in the interactive console. Okay, the first thing to know is that I actually wanted to use the Playwright browser, but I actually have completions for the Selenium browser and even the deprecated RK browser. So that's not something I want. I just want the completions for what I'm actually going to use the RPA browser Playwright. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go on to our settings. And we're going to blacklist those. So we're going to blacklist the RPA browser as well as the RPA browser fill-in. And now we only have the completions for the actual browser library which we want to use. So open browser, by just clicking that, it will actually add this import for us in the interactive console. And it's something which we want in our file too. So let's put it there. And then let's open that URL. So it has opened this browser for us. Let's change things a bit. One thing to note is that the browser has a fixed size. So, well, we're controlling it in the interactive console. So let's take that opportunity to actually set its new size. So you can use the set viewport size command and let's define a bit of, let's see, 500, 100, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Okay, and there you go. So you can see that we can use the interactive console and we can see what happens right away. One thing which is nice is that the RK browser playwright, it has this handy record selector. So we can actually use it. We're in an interactive console. So 
let's ask it to record the something. Leave the mouse stop there for a little while. Select it, and you can see that it it has shown what selector it has. So let's copy this selector. And let's also get the another selector. Let's get the password selector. Password. And to finish, let's get the login selector. And now we can actually experiment to know if those selectors are actually working. So let's type some text into the username selector. And let's type some text into the password. So you can see it entered the password. And to finish, let's click the button. And you can see that it worked. So it's very nice that we can interactively control the, the libraries that we want. And now we have our code, which we can check here. So we have this open browser. We can set the viewport size. Then we can use this type text, type secret, and click. So now we have the basic structure for our program here. We open the browser, set the viewport size, type the username, the password, and just click the button to proceed. OK, so you can see that we create our basic structure using the Interactive Console. And one thing to note is that the Interactive Console is always a blank state. So for instance, I just closed the Interactive Console. So if I just run, run this again in the Interactive Console, you'll see that it just complains that open browser wasn't found. So one thing to note is that when you're dealing with the interactive console, you should always consider that it starts blank. So you have to reload your settings or in library parts and so forth. And then you'll be able to exit to things properly. Also, you can create keywords. So for instance, let's create a simple keyword here. And you can see that my keyword is not found if I try to execute it. So you always have to remind yourself to load it in the interactive console first, and then you can execute. And another thing is that you can actually change keywords. So I can reload the keyword and I can call it again. So it's pretty nice that you have a, lot, a small feedback loop and you can always retry and retry and retry whatever you want until you get it right without having to relaunch your whole test or whole structure again. Okay, so the next thing which I want to show is actually how to use TDD related actions. So TDD stands for test-driven development, right? And the way I see it, TDD is where you first code your test, and then you can do your implementation. So let's refactor this a bit using those concepts. So for instance, the idea is that we'll have a keyword which opens browser at target, and then we'll log in. You can see that we don't have those keywords defined. 
but we already typed those in. So we can actually use the quick fix to create a keyword. And we can just create the keyword there and move the code related to open the browser. And we can do the same thing for the login. So let's create a keyword for login in. And let's move this there. Another thing you can actually think, okay, this is my main task. I want to have a resource and let's move that code to that resource. So let's create it first. And the first thing you note is like the previous time, we have an unresolved resource. But we have all. we can also use a quick fix and create that file first. And then we can just move this code down. Oh, and another thing, our imports are not the same. We have a few ways to do that. One is we don't have to type it all again. We can also use the same quick fix. So control one, and we can just import open browser into the current file. And it's not well formatted, right? So you can see there's strange spaces. So let's just code format it and that's better. And everything's correct now. So let's think, okay, what if they click actually raised an exception. Also, control one, you can surround it with a track set and then you can handle it as you'd like. What I'm going to get here is that there are many quick fixes for many things. And the quick fixes which I've shown are mostly for TD creation, but there are other things like, I can just reference a variable for instance, I just received the URL here, right? So let's say that I want to receive that as a variable. So let's create the variable. And then we can use a quick fix to create an argument, right? So now we have to the argument here and it should still be working. Or one annoying thing sometimes is that you want to get the return for something. For instance, let's say that the login has a return value to say that whether it worked or not. So sorry. we can do the return and say whether it worked, right? And we can also use a quick fix to get it that into a variable. So locked in. Okay, now I want to show two more things. The first one is the robot documentation tab. And when you're in the robot documentation tab, it will show the doc strings for whatever you have clicked. And if you click some library, it will show the full documentation for that library. So you can browse it and you can get the full documentation without leaving VS Code. And the last thing which I want to show is the robot output. So for this, I created a very simple program here. And this program will just loop and it will print an error in some situation. And it will slip just so that we can see what is happening. So let's run it. And you can see that while the run is happening, it will show what's, what keyword is actually executing. So you can keep track of what robot framework is doing. Also, it's interesting to note that when you have too many iterations, it can collapse those and just show the latest. But if you have some error message as we have there, it will still show that error message. And it also has some other nice features. For instance, 
you can filter for the warnings or just errors. And you can expand the keywords. And you can click on keywords and go directly to the location of those keywords. Also, one thing which I want to mention here is that this is actually backed by a library, which is called Robot Framework Output Stream. And you can actually use that same library out of VS Code. And it can be used so that you have logs which are more compact. And it also can stream those logs. And even if your process crashes in the middle, you'll be able to make sense of those logs. So if you want more information on that library, you can go to Robot Framework Output Stream on PyPI and check its homepage from there. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you want to get in touch, you can contact me on Slack or in GitHub. Bye.